Ladies and gentlemen, in this video today, I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite openings of all time in the game of chess. Specifically, my favorite opening with the black pieces. That is the Karo Khan. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to show you some brief ideas in the Karo Khan with this chess analysis, and I'm going to go into a practice game using the Karo Khan against an opponent. Before I get into this opening though, I would really appreciate if you guys could subscribe to my channel because I'm aiming to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 and if you guys could help me reach my goal, that would mean the world to me. So, thank you very much. So let's get straight into this opening. It starts with the opponent playing e4 and you respond with c6. Most commonly, the opponent is going to put two pawns in the center with d4 and you're going to respond with d5. This is how a majority of the games in the Karl Khan will go. Now there's three main uh, options that the opponent has now. They can push the pawn on e4, they can trade the pawn on e4, or they can protect the pawn on e4. So if they push their pawn, what Gotham Chess taught me to do is to push my c pawn. And most commonly they will trade and you will put your knight up there to stop the pawn from pushing any further. And now the opponent will probably play a developmental move. Whenever they set out their knight to f3, you always put the bishop out to pin it to the queen. And then some more developmental moves, like knight to c3, you'll move out your pawn to e6. Now you're attacking both the pawn on e5 with your knight and the pawn on c5 with your bishop on f8. So this is a very traditional position in the Karl Khan. As soon as they attack your bishop, you're just going to take right away. And they're probably going to take with the queen. And now you're feeling pretty solid. You can now take this pawn and attack their queen. The queen's going to have to run away. And then you have an option with the bishop where you're attacking that c5 pawn. Eventually, you're going to try and develop your pieces in castle kingside. And you have a pretty solid position in the advanced variation of the Karl Khan. Now we're going to check out the exchange variation, which, as it sounds like, you just exchange pawns. Now... The opponent is probably going to play something like knight c3 to attack your pawn. And what you do here is you go knight c6 responding. They're most likely just going to develop a piece like a bishop or a knight. And if they do this, you're just going to put, want to put your knight in the center. Now this is called the four knights variation. It's a pretty traditional opening. In a position like this, you're going to want to move your light squared bishop out either to g4 to pin the knight or to f5 just to get it to an open square. And then, after another random move, you're going to push your pawn up to e6, and then move your dark squared bishop up to d6. Now you also have a very solid position, and you're ready to castle. Now we're going to go over if they protect the pawn, typically with the knight. What you're supposed to do here is trade in the center. They're probably going to take with the knight. And then what you do here is you put your knight out. You can also put your bishop out to attack the knight, but... Putting your knight out is much simpler. Most of the time, they're probably going to trade. And now you have a very solid position, and you're just going to develop your pieces normally. Bring both bishops out. And then what, they're gonna, and then what you're going to do is you're going to want to castle kingside. And now you have, a you have a very strong position, and you have your bishop pair staring at the enemy king. Gotham Chess has some sequences of how this will go from here. And I forget exactly how it goes completely, but... Basically, you're pretty solid here. So that's a very brief overview of the Karl Khan. And now, we're going to go look at the practice game that I just played. So we're in the game right now, and my opponent in this game actually had 150 ELO advantage on me. So I was pretty proud that I was able to win this game against him. I just played the Karl Khan defense. I just showed you how it goes. Two, pa two pawns in the center. And he played the exchange variation against me. So he put his knight out to c3, and I responded by doing the same to c6. And right now he'd send his bishop out to pin my knight to my king. And this wasn't the correct move, but what I did here is I moved my bishop up to try and remove the pin on my knight. He developed his other knight to f3, trying to get, be able to castle. And even though this is an inaccuracy, it's not a terrible move, and the position here is still very equal. I developed my other knight just moving another piece towards the center. And he attacks that knight also with the bishop. I moved my e-pawn up one square, so that way I can get a... Nice position on d6 for my bishop, for my dark squared bishop. He castles, I move my bishop out. He moves his rook over to the semi-open file, and I short castle. 
This position is very solid for both players. No player has a very distinct advantage. But I do like where my bishops are right now. Both of my bishops are looking at the enemy king, and so I, I like my position. Even though he's castled, his king isn't too safe. He takes my knight, and so I just trade back with the bishop. Here, he moves his knight up, plunging into my position. I move my queen over onto the same diagonal as the bishop, and so now both pieces are looking at that horse and also to the h-pawn against his king. He takes my knight with his dark squared bishop, and right now what I do here is I take back, even though now my king is open. I don't exactly hate this position, however, because I can move my king over to h8 and then move my rook over to g8, staring even further at that king, and I will have a huge attack on his king. He moves his knight away, and so I attack it again with the pawn, and he just moves it straight back. And so I just attack it again with an f-pawn, but apparently this is an inaccuracy. I don't really know why. What he should have done here is taken the light squared bishop, and that would have weakened my attack on his king because not I wouldn't have had as many pieces staring over in that direction. I move my king over to f7 with the vision of doubling my bishops on the g file. Sorry, doubling my rooks on the g file and staring at that king and having a huge devastating attack on the white king. This isn't the best move. It's a miss apparently. I should have gone queen f7. I really have no idea what this tactic is. Maybe Oh, maybe it's, uh, then moving it to h5, threatening check. No. I'm not sure exactly what this, why I should have done this, and I think my move was still pretty reasonable, and I'm still winning in this position. So I move my rook over, which is apparently an inaccuracy, but I'm getting ready to double my rooks on the g-file and creating a huge attack. He moves his knight back. I'm not really sure why. He does this. It just doesn't seem like a very good move. I move my rook up. The computer says it's a pretty average move. But like I've said a few times now, this attack on the white king is going to be devastating. It might not even survive at all. The opponent blocks the g-pawn with his knight. So what I do here is I move my rook over. And now I have four pieces staring at that knight. So I'm either going to win a ton of material or possibly even checkmate him somehow. The opponent makes a blunder here. He moves his knight up and I can just take it with a pawn. And he take and then we trade our pawns in the center. And now he just blundered a knight and I still have the same attack. Now he moves his queen over to try and pin my rook to my king so that my pieces aren't as mobile and my attack might not be as successful, but I still take his knight with my bishop. He takes back with the pawn and I take back the queen. Even though my Rook is pinned to my king. I'm still threatening checkmate in one move here. And for some reason, he doesn't see the attack, and I checkmate my opponent in one move. He was a 1340 and had over 150 ELO advantage on me. I am very proud of this win. I really enjoyed the Karl Khan opening. It is a great defense for the black pieces against e4, and I really suggest you guys learn this. This was just a brief overview of the Karl Khan. If you want to learn more about it, check out Gotham Chess's video. If you guys made it to the end of this video, comment down below what your favorite opening is. Whether it be the Coral Khan, the Queen's Gambit, the Vienna Gambit, the Danish Gambit, or just any other opening. And I will try to make another video just like this one on that opening. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you guys could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you guys could help me reach my goal, that would just mean the world to me. So let's see if we can do that. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!